welcome to class 38 in topics in power electronics and distributed generation. Uh, in the last class, we have been looking at an example of a 10 kVA three phase inverter and uh, at 400 volts uh, AC connected to the grid and through a filter inductance and we are looking at uh, dif different aspects of the problem. We looked at uh, what duty cycle commands would be required at certain instance of time. Then we looked at uh, what would be the value of the filter inductor. We looked at the phasor diagram for operation as a, a unity power factor active rectifier. And then we looked at uh, for short, short durations of time what the switching functions would be for the three legs, what the common mode voltage would be on the AC side and the DC side. And then we looked at the parasitic components of the power converter through which uh, these uh, common mode currents could potentially flow. Then we looked at the expression for the DC bus current and we looked at the different frequency components of the DC bus current and its RMS levels under various operating conditions. So, we use that to then look at uh, uh, what <coughs> would be the lifetime of the capacitor, the power loss in the capacitor bank and the minimum and maximum uh, uh, voltage on the DC bus in terms of looking at the DC bus ripple. Uh, and uh, we did that for assuming uh, operation under balance conditions. Uh, we looked at currents at 5 kilowatt power level and uh, the at full rated 10 kVA operating condition. So, in the next part of the problem, we uh, are looking at uh, when you have a 3 percent unbalance in the grid voltage and uh, what would be the effect on the, uh, the frequency components of the currents and what would be the, the lifetime of the, uh, of the capacitors, the power loss in the capacitor and the ripple on the DC bus under a, when you have a 3 person imbalance. So, under uh, when you had balanced operation, the numbers that we calculated was that uh, we our power loss in the our power loss in the capacitor was uh, was 5.6 watts. Uh, and then we use that to evaluate the temperature of the core of the capacitor and the temperature worked out to be 70.3 degrees centigrade and we got a life uh, of uh, 2.28 years and our core temperature was 70.3 degrees centigrade and uh, the power loss in the bank is uh, 11.2 watts because there are two uh, capacitors in the bank upper and the lower capacitor. And then when we looked at the ripple voltage, uh, we saw that the ripple voltage was dominated by the, the ESR effect because the ripple current is at high frequency uh, in this balanced operation. And we saw that the ripple voltage due to the capacitive effect uh, had an amplitude of 3.6 volts whereas uh, due to the ESR the amplitude was 6.3 volts. So, the ripple on the uh, capacitor bank which consists of two capacitors is about 1.3 volts. And so, we would have a VDC max of 800 plus 1.3 and So, this appears at high frequencies as a band around the nominal 800 volts. So, in the next part of the problem, we are looking at uh, at the 3 percent imbalance and what would be the resulting uh, 
uh, uh, uh, quantities that, that would need to be evaluated on a similar manner. So, if you have a uh, 3 percent uh, unbalance, we are uh, we are talking about uh, a, your in terms of the ABC voltages, we are looking at the symmet from a symmetrical component analysis, you would be able to say what the voltages are. So, we can write the symmetrical voltage and uh, transformations, symmetrical components uh, transformation V 0, V plus, V minus and V plus is 326 volts, which is our amplitude uh, of the line to neutral voltage when your line to line RMS is 400 volts. And your negative sequence voltage is 9.8 volts, which corresponds to 3 percent of your positive sequence voltage and your zero sequence voltage is 0. Uh, using this, you can calculate what your V A, V B and V C are. The 0.1 radian angle difference is from the previous phasor analysis required for power transfer and V B. So, the signs of 2 pi by 3 is opposite because this is a negative sequence quantity. So, you could then make use of the the quantities a, B, C voltages and we will also assume that the con converter still operates with balanced currents in its output. you could using your the average model come up with your I average uh, would be 12.5 plus 0 0.375 cos 2 pi 100 T uh, amperes. Uh, this is at uh, 10 kilowatt and uh, power level of operation at 400 volts. So, you could see what this 12.5 and 3.75 numbers correspond to. Uh, your 12.5 is essentially uh, 3 into 327.6 into 20.4 divided by 800 which is a DC bus voltage 3 by 2 into 800. So, this is the 12.5. Uh, 327 is the amplitude of your positive sequence voltage 20.4 is essentially 14.4 uh, amps correspond to 10 kVA operation of a 3 phase uh, power converter at 10 kVA and the amplitude would be root 2 times 14.4 which is 20.4. So, you get that to be your from your DC power transfer and your uh, interaction of the, the positive sequence uh, <coughs> uh, current 
and your negative sequence voltage 9.8 volts uh, times your positive sequence current would give your 100 hertz uh, ripple. In addition to that you have the high frequency ripple current. So, you could then evaluate your, uh, your overall, overall uh, spectrum of the currents that, uh, that would be flowing through your DC link. So, at 10 kilowatt power level also at 5 kilowatt power level you have 12.5 amps DC at 10 kilowatts or half of that 6.25 amps at 5 kilowatt power level. Uh, if you look at your 100 hertz you have 0.37 amps uh, peak or 0.186 amps at 5 kilowatt power level and your high frequency RMS. This occurs at uh, the switching frequency and its harmonics. This is 8.8 .8 amps RMS and 4.4 amps RMS at 5 kilowatt power level. And you could use these numbers to evaluate your uh, your uh, temperature losses in the capacitor bank and the corresponding uh, temperature rise. So, the losses in this particular case our loss per capacitor is 8.8 .8 square that is the high frequency uh, RMS current times 71.5 milli ohms uh, resistance ESR plus uh, 0.37. So, this turns out to be the same 5.6 watts because the, the quantity due to the unbalance is quite uh, negligible compared to the quantity the 8.8 .8 amps flowing at the high frequencies. So, you have 5.6 watts for the capacitor bank and 11.2 watt uh, for the capacitor and 11.2 watts for the overall bank. And because the power dissipation is not uh, changed, your core temperature stays the same is 50 degree ambient plus 5.6 watts into uh, 3.64 which was the thermal resistance that we calculated. So, this turns out to be the same temperature 70.3 degree centigrade. So, your lifetime stays the same which is uh, 3000 hours into 1.2 factor into 2 to the power of 95 minus 70.3 by 10. So, this turns out to be again 2.28 years. So, the 3 percent unbalance did not cause a, a change in the lifetime because the power dissipation stayed the same. But if you look at it from the perspective of the DC bus ripple, you have due to 100 hertz. you have uh, V 100, the 100 hertz component is 0.37 into the impedance 1 by 2 pi 100 into 1100 microfarads capacitance. So, this is 0.54 volts per capacitor. So, the overall bank would see about 1.1 volt. So, this it would be in addition to the high frequency uh, ripple that shows up and the due to the ESR effect. So, your VDC max so this is 5.54 into 2. So, 
So about a, a two two volts uh, uh, amplitude ripple riding over the over the DC bus. So you can see that in terms of the unbalance, there was an effect on the ripple, but not much in terms of participation or lifetime projection. Uh, in the in the last part of the problem, you are asked to repeat the again this calculation when the inverter is operating as a statcom providing 10 kV leading wire to the grid to a balanced grid. So, you could do a similar calculation and uh, identify the frequency components of the current, uh, then use that to calculate the expected life of the capacitor, the power loss in the capacitor bank and the ripple on the DC bus. Uh, a similar procedure could be adopted and uh, I will just mention the, uh, the answers in this particular case. So, in this particular case your inverter voltage terminal voltage is higher 253.6 at angle 0 and at 10 kVA your high frequency RMS current turns out to be lower it is 7.2 amps and there is uh, no 100 hertz uh, uh, ripple. because there is no unbalance and your lifetime of the capacity in this particular case works out to be 3.66 years and your power loss in the capacitor bank is 7.4 watts in the bank and your ripple is is uh, plus or minus 1 volt uh, in the DC bus due to the high frequency ESR of the capacitor. Um, so, so, we can see that once you have the procedure for evaluating these components, you could apply it for a variety of conditions and see how your cap DC bus capacitor would be operating. In the last part of the problem, you are told to evaluate, uh, asked to evaluate the, uh, the losses in the semiconductor devices. The, th the three legs of the inverter consists of uh, 1200 volt 50 amp IGBT modules and the conduction and switching loss parameters are for the IGBT, the collector emitter voltage on at, during on condition is point, 0.88 volts plus a resistive term of 0.25 times uh, IC. Uh, for similarly, for the diode you have a fixed on, uh, on state voltage term of 0.9 volts plus a resistive term of 0.26 times your diode current. The switching parameters for the, for the loss parameters are evaluated at a DC bus voltage of 600 volts and at 50 amps. And the on state loss of the switch is 5 millijoules uh, under these conditions. The off switching off loss, turn off loss is 4 millijoules. For the diode for reverse recovery, it is 3.6 millijoules. And we are assuming the scaling factor for voltage and current to be equal to 1. So, you are asked to evaluate the total power loss in the three phase inverter operating as an active rectifier under a normal grid voltage. So, to evaluate this, we will look at the, <coughs> the losses in uh, each component, uh, the diodes and the switch. So, 
So, the first thing to, to look at is what your duty cycle of each leg would be. Your duty cycle would be 0.5 plus 328 by 800 times cos 2 pi 50 t minus 0.1 and these were numbers that we got from the phasor analysis. We have the switching frequency f s w to be 5 kilohertz which means that your switching period is 200 microseconds. So, the number of switching instants in a fundamental cycle is 20 milliseconds divided by 200 microseconds. So, you have 100 switching instants. You also have your phase current I A of t is 10 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by 10 times the square root of 2 to get the peak. So, at 10 kilowatt power level. So, you could use that to then evaluate the conduction loss. So, starting with conduction loss in the diode, so top diode D A, uh, the energy loss can be evaluated over a switching interval. your conduction loss is for for d a top diode at each switching interval is uh, given by 0 0.9 times i a at instant i plus 0 0.26 into i a square at instant i for a duration of d a at the ith instant times your, your switching duration T s w uh, for i a which is positive or 0 otherwise when i a is negative and then your conduction loss term over a fundamental is given by 1 by 20 milliseconds 20 into 10 to the power of minus 3 summation of the energy loss terms from i is equal to 1 and there are uh, 100 points over a fundamental. So, you have and this number adds up to be equal to 27.8 watts. Similarly, you could calculate the conduction loss in the in the uh, IGBT. So, you have conduction loss in IGBT S A, the bottom IGBT at instant i, uh, it is given by 0 0.88 times i a of i plus 0 0.25 
i a square of i and it is operating for a duration of 1 minus d a of i times uh, T s w when i a is greater than 0 and 0 otherwise. And then to transfer from the conduction to the, the energy to power over a fundamental cycle. Twenty milliseconds summation I is equal to one to hundred of E conduction of S A B of I. And this turns out to be five point zero six watts. Then the remaining term that need to be evaluated would be the switching loss term in the IGBT and the switching loss term of the diode. So, you have for the IGBT S A bottom at instant I is your E on at rated condition plus E off at rated condition. times your actual DC bus voltage is 800 volts, the rated condition specified is at 600 volts to the power of K V which is 1 and I A at instant I and 50 is the rated condition again to the exponent 1 if I A is positive and 0 otherwise. So, you could then transfer from your energy to your power over the fundamental switching loss power loss in the IGBT over a fundamental to be equal to this 1 by your duration 20 milliseconds the summation of your loss I 1 to 100 of E S W S A B of I and this turns out to be 15.6 uh, watts for this particular operating condition the 10 kilowatt uh, operating condition as an active rectifier. If you look at the switching loss in the diode, the anti parallel diode, so you have the reverse recovery term under nominal condition times your 800 by 600 to the power of kV again we have taken this as 1, it could be a number less than 1 uh, more commonly and again I A of I divided by 50 again for reverse recovery it is a number typically less than 1, but uh, we have taken it as 1 for I A greater than 0 and 0 otherwise. So, Again, you to calculate your power from your energy over a fundamental cycle. The time is uh, 20 milliseconds for a fundamental. And this turns out to be 
6.25 watts and for the this is per IGBT device uh, or per uh, diode. So, if you have a three phase inverter you have six, uh, six IGBT switches and six anti parallel diodes. So, for the inverter would be six times So, this would be 328 watts. So, if you are looking at the efficiency of such a converter, your efficiency considering just the losses in the in your semiconductors would be uh, 96 point 7 percent. So, if you are considering losses in the other components like your DC bus capacitor in your filter inductors, the efficiency would come further down. So, this is the maximum achievable efficiency due to the losses in the semiconductor itself. So, in the next uh, problem we are looking at uh, a three phase uh, six switch SCR current source inverter and we would like to show that it can be modeled as a pair of uh, single pole triple throw switches and we will label the switches in the sequence of the firing pulse typically given to a uh, current source inverter and we will assume that the input voltages are balanced and sinusoidal phase each phase shifted by 120 degrees. And uh, first part of the problem is to show that this uh, the si single pole triple throw switch meets the requirement for efficient transfer of power between the input and output of the current source inverter. So, if you look at a typical current source inverter, you have uh, thyristors or GTOs uh, connected. So, you you need reverse blocking devices, uh, three phase. So, you have voltage V A, V B, V C, current I A, I B, I C. Your, your DC link has a large uh, inductor which emulates a current source and the output can be a load or it can be a source in when you need regeneration or braking and uh, you could then uh, write down the expression for the voltages. Okay. So, you have a balanced set of voltages V A V B is A sin omega t minus 2 pi by 3. And uh, to model it, uh, we could uh, so to show that you could model it as a pair of uh, single pole triple throw switches. Switches. So the previous power converter can be modeled as uh, a pole connected to three throws on the top, and similarly a pole connected to three throws on the bottom. So you have uh, essentially a switch which could link point. 1 to the top or point 3 to the top or point 5 to the top or you could link uh, say 4 to the bottom or 6 to the bottom or uh, 2 to the bottom. Again 4, 6, 2, 1, 2, 3 are essentially the, the switch, uh, switches which could be the thyristors or GTOs which would be fired and a typical firing sequence would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, hence the labeling 1, 3, 5, 4, 6, 2 for the, for the switching devices. <coughs> so, you could see that uh, in this particular configuration your uh, top uh, single pole triple throw switch would be either in position 1, 3 or 5 uh, which means that uh, uh, 1 and 3 is never shorted together because the pole would be uh, only uh, at one of these three points. So, which means that uh, your voltage source would never get short circuited. Similarly, your uh, top uh, throw would be either on 1, 3 or 5 and your bottom would be either on uh, 4, 6 or 2 which means that your 
your current source has always a path for the current, you will never be open circuiting the current source. So, for example, when in this particular configuration, uh, your uh, one is connected to, uh, to uh, uh, phase C, which means that I C would be equal to I D C and 2 is connected to uh, V A, which means that I A would be equal to minus I D C. So, you always have a path for current and you will never short out any of the voltage source and uh, you can efficiently, efficiently meet the requirements of the voltage sources on the AC side or the current source on the DC side and hence power can be transferred without any uh, sh shorting of voltage source or opening of the current source and you always provide a path for the source conditions to be met. So, in the next problem, uh, we would like to show that the switching states of this particular CSI converter can be shown as uh, uh, by two pair of vec uh, vectors uh, with uh, three binary values. So, B 3, so the each vector would have a binary value of 0 or 1 uh, and there would be three terms for that particular vector. So, B represents the set of binary numbers. So, so if you look at your uh, uh, switching positions, your top switch could be uh, considered as a switching vector S p and when S p is uh, device 1 is fired at switch 1, your S p vector could be uh, shown to be 1 0 0. Similarly, when it is at position 3, your S p vector could be 0 1 0 and when it is at position 5, your S p vector could be uh, 0 0 1. So, you could think of S p as a, a vector with 3 components S p 1, S p 2 and S p 3 and each S p 1, S p 2, S p 3 taking components values of either 0 or 1 and depending on whether it is at position 1, 3 or 5, it could take the corresponding uh, values. Similarly, for your uh, vector S n, so for the switch S n at position 4, you would have S n would be 1 0 0 and similarly at 6, your S n would be 0 1 0 and at 2, your S n would be 0 0 1. So, similarly S n vector can be thought of as 3 components S n 1, S n 2 and S n 3 each having a value of either 0 or 1. And the, the switch provides uh, information about the status of the which switch in the power converter is on at a given duration of time. So, either of the three components of S n can be 1. So, no two of those uh, uh, S n values uh, components S n 1 and S n 2 cannot be simultaneously 1 any one of the three can be one at a given point. Similarly, any one of the S p uh, components can have a value of one. And in the next problem, you are, uh, you are told to show the switching space vector diagram for the current source inverter and show that it corresponds to a hexagon and to identify all possible uh, 0 states of the current source inverter. So, uh, so we, we have seen that the voltages V A, V B, V C are given by uh, this quantity and then we can look at, at what duration of angle alpha, uh, uh, where alpha would be equal to your omega t would each of the switch S p uh, 
and S n be on for what durations uh, corresponding to say for a diode bridge uh, operation where your firing delay is close to 0. So, under uh, such a condition what would be the, uh, the values that S p and S n takes. So, for uh, so when it is operating without any uh, delays, firing delays, etc., for the thyristor, your your SP would be on, SP one would be on for uh, thirty degrees less than theta less than 150 degrees and 0 otherwise. Similarly, S p 2 would be on when that particular phase is having uh, carrying the uh, highest voltage. So, this would your normal con conduction du duration would be between 150 and 270 and 0 otherwise. Similarly, S p 3 would be 1 for 270 and 0 otherwise. Similarly, you could write the durations when the bottom switches would be naturally on S n 1 would be 1 for 210. Similarly, S n 2 and S n 3 would be 1 for 90 degrees less than theta less than 210 and 0 otherwise. So, this is when your diode rectifier is essentially op operating as a 6 step uh, in 6 step operation assuming uh, a constant DC current DC link current. So, if you are operating at high frequencies in PWM you will be using states which are adjacent uh, in this dur uh, shorter durations of this particular angles. So, you could then look at uh, your uh, transformation. Uh, from your a b c reference to your alpha beta reference because your uh, uh, state vector diagram is drawn in your alpha beta plane. So, you have your v alpha beta gamma is two thirds half minus half. times V A B C vector and similarly you could take your, your, your switching vectors S alpha beta gamma to be two thirds of this same matrix times your switching vector S where S corresponds to S 1, S 2, S 3 and this in turn corresponds to your S p vector minus your S n vector where you are taking uh, your S p to be your 1 0 0 0 1 0 etcetera and adding them as real numbers to get your uh, switching vector S. <coughs> so, then you could look at the durations say for duration between say for theta belonging to say say 30 degrees to uh, 90 degrees 
if you look at this particular duration then we could see uh, th uh, that sp1 would be having a value of 1 with the others being 0 and similarly your sn2 would be having a value between 30 degrees and 90 degrees this would be having sn1 would be having a value of 1 and the S, 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 sn1 and sn3 would be 0 and sn2 would be having a value of 1. So, you could write your s vector to be equal to uh, 1 minus 1 is 0 and you could use this transformation to look at your s alpha beta to be equal to 1 minus 1 by root 3. Similarly, you could look at your other uh, switching positions from 90 degrees to 150 degrees your switching vector is 1 0 minus 1 and your S alpha beta would be equal to 0 uh, 1 by root 3. Your third position would be for theta belonging to the range 150 to 210 your s vector would correspond to 0 1 minus 1 and your s in your alpha beta plane would correspond to 0 2 by root 3 and your vector 4 would be for the duration 210 to 270 your s would be minus 1 1 0 and your s alpha beta would be minus 1 1 by root 3 between 270 and 330 degrees your switching vector would be minus 1 0 1 s alpha beta be equal to minus 1 minus 1 by root 3 and your sixth vector would be theta during the duration Three thirty to thirty degrees. So, if you plot these vectors, you will see that. Uh, uh, the, those six vectors you would have uh, uh, the corresponding pos uh, positions of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so there, are, there are six points uh, ar around a hexagon. So, you would get a similar uh, uh, space vector diagram and 0 vector corresponds to the cent uh, center. Uh, unlike the voltage source uh, space vector diagram, this is actually rotated by 30 degrees. So, this is very similar to what you would experience in a for a voltage source inverter you could make use of the modulating states and show that for a current source inverter also you have a hexagon corresponding to the state vector diagram. The 0 states would correspond to the condition when say for example, uh, if uh, both the, uh, the throws are at the same point then essentially the voltage seen by your DC source would be 0 because two switches would be uh, connected to the uh, both the throws would be connected to the same pole and your voltage sources would all be open circuited which means that your I A, I B and I C would be equal to 0. So, there is no energy transfer during the 0 states and there are three possible 0 states you could either be connected 
to 1 and 4 or you be connected to 3 and 6 or 4 and 2. So, you have 3 zero, st uh, three zero states. So, you could write down the 3 0 states as uh, or so so there are three possible zero states and uh, 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 unlike in a two, uh, voltage source inverter, there, where there are uh, two zero states in a current source inverter, there are three zeros possible three zero states. To look at the input output relationship between your AC and uh, AC voltage and the output DC voltage and also the DC current and the input AC current, you could write down the relationship So, you have your I A is equal to S P 1 minus S N 1 times I D C. Uh, similarly, your I B is S P 2 minus S N 2 times I D C, your I C is S P 3 minus S N 3 times I D C. Uh, you could also write it as uh, in a more compact form we have uh, I A B C vector to be I A I B I C and S P 1 S P is equal to S P 1 S P 2 S P 3. So, you could write it as I A B C vector is equal to S P minus S n times uh, I D C. So, this relates your A C side currents to your D C uh, current of your C S I. Similarly, you could uh, uh, write your where essentially your S P vector is S P 3 and S n vector is Similarly, you could write your output voltage V out which is the voltage across your positive and negative uh, 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 poles of the of, uh, of the switch is S P 1 V A plus S P 2 V B plus S P 3 V C minus S N 1 V A plus S n 2 V B plus S n 3 V C. So, this could be written as uh, essentially S p vector minus S n vector uh, transpose take the dot product times V A B C vector would give you output voltage vector. So, you could make use of your uh, uh, switching states uh, vectors to actually obtain your input output relationship. So, here you get the output voltage in terms of your input uh, voltages and then you get your input currents I A B C in terms of your D C current. So, this gives you your input output relationship of this particular power converter. So, uh, we have looked at now the example problems in the next class we will continue with where we had left off for the filter design. We had looked at uh, LCL filter and looked at how to determine the values of L uh, and C. Uh, we will start with looking at uh, how to uh, determine what would be the damping components required to damp out the oscillations in such a LCL filter in the next class. Thank you.